Hello, welcome to episode 38 of the Obligatory Podcast with Kermit and Mike. I am Mike. And I'm Kermit. And we're back, and we missed you, kind of, a little bit. Didn't we? Didn't you miss him? You can, you can some, somehow make it sound a little bit better than that, not so much of a lie. Why? I'm serious. This is like my favorite part of the week, coming over here and just talking to you about things that nobody's going to listen to. <laughs> This is it. This, this is, is like it. this is kind of like I I don't make a diary. I don't have a journal. If I don't get it out here, I'm gonna take it out on someone who doesn't deserve it at the house or at the open mics or at the open mics. <laughs> you know. Oh uh, yeah, blah blah blah. Obligatory podcast. Listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean. Uh, check out check us out on YouTube. There's gotta be an easier way. Is there a way to look for us on YouTube besides going through your personal YouTube page? I just type obligatory. an obligatory podcast. Yeah, I, I, I've tried that. I've directed people to do that, and it doesn't take them right there. It's like they might find an episode or something, but it doesn't take them right. we got to find a better link to take us, take them right to a page mm, that's all the podcast. I guess i got to do homework. You know, it's like it's so rare to find someone who wants to watch or listen to us anyways, and then I feel bad when i got to make them go through 32 steps to get to it, you know? I'll work on it. I can't yeah, really say anything. Because, like, you don't do enough around here. You don't. <laughs> You know, setting up the lights, the camera, the sound every week, making sure that we're recording. My voice doesn't even sound like this in real life. I sound amazing right now, but <laughs> you know, I don't. So, uh, yeah, man, it's good to be back. How was your week? Not as more, not exciting as yours, man. Oh, you know, you weren't with me. I How know, you know? I heard every step of the way. Did I have you? trackers, man. Did you? Yeah. You know people who know people. I know people that know people that watch you for some odd reason. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, just to recap, my week, it was pretty fucking amazing. Dude. See, uh, I told you better than what I would have just said. Uh, yeah. I uh, I was on the road with Mr. Louis Anderson, mm. and uh, we did Ponte Vedra up near Jacksonville. We did the con- uh, Ponte Vedra concert hall up there. Then we went over to Clearwater, did the Capitol Theater, seats 1,800 people, and it was a sold out show. Nice. Just ridiculous, man. And then uh, his fans love him. It's so ridiculous how much. I mean,. When you and I do comedy shows, people come out because, oh, I got tickets to this comedy <laughs> I was show. I say no one's those. No one's there. You know, they're happy if the comics turned out being turn out being good. Right. You know, but just to be and to see to see someone performing where that entire audience came out because of him for his style of comedy and his name. It's just overwhelming, dude. And then uh, we did the uh, the Amaturo Theater at the Broward Center down in Fort Lauderdale. Then we did two shows in Key West the next night, and uh, it it's it, I was spoiled, man, because you know you haven't really gone on the road too much yet. You're starting to come out. You're going to be doing some of the smaller balkers, yeah, and stuff like that. Florida. But dude, just to go from playing the backs of bowling alleys and playing seafood restaurants that happen to have a comedy night and a small stage to uh, pulling up. And there's a personal greeter and runner to take care of whatever I need, you know, to escort me to my dressing room and see if there's any food I would like to order from any menu and blah, blah, blah. It's just like those people have to know. They cater everything to you? Yeah. Did they get cocaine for you? They could have. Oh, cool. Those people have to know that I'm new to this because like I'm, I'm that guy that's like, no, I'm good. No, I'm good. You know, <laughs> I mean, I imagine at some point. You know, if you did this long enough, you just become that douche that's like, I want you to pick out every green M&M that the M is not perfectly printed. And you didn't do that? The li- nah, dude. I would have told him, buy no, me a pack I, of Twizzlers well, and then strip every Twizzler. Like, at one point, like, there was something going on in the hallway and there was all this stuff around and I started helping the backstage hands <laughs> move some stuff that, like, looked at me like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I look like you need help with these chairs. They're like, no, no, no. You don't touch anything. We'll get in trouble. I'm like, okay. And, uh, yeah, dude. Plus, for this trip we i picked them up in jacksonville and then we were driving the whole way so it was about every trip every gig was about four hours away from the last one so we got a lot of good travel time and talk and you gave me a lot of uh a lot of advice a lot of history of comedy type stuff which it's all clean right his shows he's he's 100 percent clean but then like in real life he drops the f-bomb more times than i ever do did you slip up on stage i did not slip up at stage you know me <sighs> Like my material itself, I was slip. Yeah, my material itself isn't what you would call filthy or dirty. But even I have jokes that I won't do when I'm opening for him. And a lot of his crowd, it's it's a good mix nowadays because there's the there's the older crowd that loves him because he's Louis and he's been doing stand up for thirty right. years and he's always had this wholesome family you know persona. But then there's a whole new generation coming out because he's on baskets. So he's getting like that younger hipster people who like Zach Galifianakis and Indy Comedy right. like group. 
And uh, but still, he doesn't change up his comedy. His comedy itself is also wholesome and family friendly, and that's why he, what he expects from his opening acts. And there's jokes that you wouldn't even think of mine that would be inappropriate. That one night, like there was only one joke I did all weekend that, uh, and it got great laughs too. Which uh, it's funny because he came up to me afterwards after the show. And he's like, you know, or it was the next day. He's like, you know, you did a joke last night that just made me a little upset. And I'm like, what? And he told me which one. And I'm like, oh, really? That's one of my favorite jokes to do. People love it. And <laughs> That's he's my like, closer. <laughs> he's like, yeah. He's like, but I don't feel like it's really who you are and everything else. And I feel like it's a little bit mean. I'm like, well, it is, it is a meaner That's joke. a mean joke. But like my whole persona for so long has been like the lovable asshole. You know, I guess half your jokes are mean. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, but I really don't think that's so we had a really good chat about, you know, comedy and direction. And like it, it brings up that good point. Like I'm a fan of all types of comedy. Like I I might be one of the only comics out there who I have no problem if the guy's a ventriloquist. I got no problem if it's a comic magician. I have no problem if they use a guitar. I feel like as a good comedian, your job is to elicit laughter. And whatever media you use to do that, I'm all for it. You know, are there are there quote unquote hacky people in every one of those? Yeah. But I hate the comics who are just like, oh, that guy's a guitar comic. So is it funny? You know, or oh, that guy does magic. So what? Is it funny? Right. You know, I hate these guys who are just like, oh, but it's hack. Oh, really? Because you're a guy standing up there with a microphone talking into it. And I see way more of those <laughs> than the other shit out there, you know? So should I do it like a theme to get more viewers? And like, should I wear a sombrero? Maybe would that be too hacky? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm open to it. I mean, <laughs> I would not. I would like, never live it down. Like I've seen your act. Anything you can do to help it, it would be great. You know. <laughs> All right. Good night. I'll Any, see you later. Anything opposite from what you're doing now can only improve it. You know. So, no, dude. I'm 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 really excited to take you on the road a couple of times and start letting you work it out in front of a bigger audience and work dude, on your third. The one room I was like, I'm never gonna do that room, and now you're taking me to it. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm not gonna say the name because I don't want to like. Yeah, but you know, we'll talk about it when it gets closer. <laughs> but um, for this trip, uh, Louis is a bigger guy, and <laughs> <laughs> obviously, uh, and uh, his management company called me up and they're like, "Well, uh, you're gonna be driving around. You can either take your car or we'll rent you a vehicle." And I was like, "Oh, well, you know, I've driven Louis around once, but it was just a short hop from Lakeland to Orlando. I had my Nissan Versa hatchback at the time, and literally, he was just." Like <laughs> like a clown kind of, car? Yeah, he was like on my shoulder the whole ride, but that was only an hour and a half ride. And PT Cruiser is yeah. like, like a hydraulic system. He's yeah. like leaning on the right. Yeah, well, he even says, whenever they put him on one of those small planes where there's one seat on this side and two seats on that side of the aisle, you know what side he gets put on. You know, there's two people. Does he have to buy you know? two seats? Is he that, is he that big I, level? No, because he's like first class, so those seats always. Oh, know, true. Yeah, yeah. True, he true, doesn't true. fly coach like the rest Duh. of us. <laughs> <laughs> or like with the luggage like you. <laughs> oh, I see oh. what you did there. Oh, really? How yeah. is the overhead compartment? You put a little pillow, lay down, stretch out. <laughs> I put a straw for air <laughs> to breathe through. But um, so his his people are like, oh, well, we talked to Louie and we're going to go ahead and rent you a car. And I'm like, oh, okay. I figure it's going to be like one a monster was, truck. I thought it was going to be like a, <laughs> a, a like a crossover a or something else. And uh, dude. The first thing they tried to give me was a Cadillac something. And I'm like, I'm not driving that. Why? It was fucking... Re it took up two parking spaces at Enterprise. They had it pulled into two spaces. Dude, I would have took it out. Um, no, I'm not. I, dude, I looked at oh it. Oh, my God. I what did you settle for? I couldn't even... Settled for. Uh, I saved about three inches by downsizing to the Nissan Armada. I don't know what that is, but it sounds little. It's a fucking boat and a half, dude. The only thing bigger than me on the road was semis. It's huge. I got to see a picture of this. Yeah. Well, I got pictures of it, but dude, it was one of those vehicles where you can't go an inch either way. You have to stay right in the lane. What's it called? A Nissan what? Yeah, it comfortably seats nine. Nine Nissan people? Armada. Armada. Okay, I'm looking at this thing. And it's yeah. a new version? Yeah, it was the 2018. 2018. V8, which after four days with it i finally on the way back because uh i picked him up in jacksville oh that thing is big <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude oh, yeah that thing is a, that thing is a it's big. a beast right yeah it's huge yeah. it looks awesome though oh dude but it took me because i'm used to driving like the pt cruiser and the nissan versa hatchback. you used to being low to the ground yeah 
And I even asked you for advice on driving this thing before because I found out that it was going to be a bigger vehicle. I'm like, yeah. dude, do you have any advice? And I've been worried. I've been wanting to buy a Rogue, a Nissan Rogue for a while, and I've been worried about going up that big. I'm like, oh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it with a bigger vehicle. I feel like I should have my uh, like CDL license after spending a week <laughs> with this. Like, I should do... Dude, this thing was huge, and I didn't even start enjoying it until... <laughs> I'm looking at the interior. <laughs> it's yeah. so big. I didn't even start enjoying it until uh, I picked him up in Jacksonville. We crisscrossed the state doing gigs, and then he flew out of Key West, and that left me to do the drive from Key West to Orlando on my own, back home, to return the rental car. Right. And uh, it wasn't until doing that six-and-a-half-hour straight drive... I got off the keys. I'm like, well, let's open this puppy up. You know, it's the end of the run. We made it safely all the gigs. We got the extra insurance on this thing. Oh, my God. What do you mean open it up? You'd like... be surprised. A vehicle that big with the V8, the pickup on it was ridiculous. Oh, Louis didn't like you to speed? No, he actually uh, said I drove like an old woman. Nah. <laughs> he was he was picking on my speed the whole time. He's like, ah, we could go a bit faster, Mike. I'm like, no, we can't. Because uh, I'm not comfortable with the vehicle this big. It was like driving a fucking tank, dude. I mean, I drive buses. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah, good. Yeah, you had told me. You're like, dude, it's great because you... And I will say this. Uh, they give you a lot more respect when you're in the Armada. Like People move out the yeah, way. Yeah, because when I'm in the Versa, and even driving here tonight, I was like, I almost died five times on the turnpike. <laughs> but when you're on the Armada, they just realize, or when you're in the Armada, they just realize they're going to lose whatever fight they decide to try yeah, pulling. You're not going to win. Yeah. It would... Like, if a, if a hatchback tried to, like, bump into my lane, it'd be like trying to shoot a train with a BB gun. It's not <laughs> going to happen for you, you know? So, yeah, it, it was a fun experience, though, man. You didn't do anything weird in the rental, did you? Like, how so? You know, like, some people do, like, weird shit in the rental. What was, what was I going to You didn't leave your, like, your seed in the seats or anything like that. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm just saying. Who does you, that? Because you watch videos while you drive. Not this time. Okay. Not this time, dude. I was so cautious. Which is so unsafe for the record. <laughs> it is. But at least if I watch videos in the PT Cruiser and I start drifting, I, I can like, you know. Change I, grip? I got I got like <laughs> I got like three different, I got three feet until I go into another lane, you know? <laughs> With this thing, it was really all I could do just to stay in that, <laughs> stay in the lines. But dude, it was, it was a fun time. It was a good trip and... Uh, yeah, uh, got a lot of great insight, got a lot of good advice. A lot of things going on in his career. He was flying out to Los Angeles to film a game show. And then I guess there's some TV show on TBS right now called Search Party. And uh, about a bunch of college friends, someone goes missing and they decide to go out. And he signed on to do five episodes in New York. So when I picked him up in Jacksonville, he had just flown out of New York from doing like the costume fittings and everything for that. And then he's flying up to record that. And then Baskets got approved for a fourth season. So he's going back to film that. He won an Emmy for it the first season. And uh, Did you ask for a spot to get on the show? I, I don't feel like there's anything good for me on oh, that shit. show. You know, you, I feel like... You fool! Yeah, yeah. You didn't ask. No, dude. You didn't uh, ask for anything. No, I didn't <laughs> ask. I didn't ask for anything. But let's just say there's some, there's some future work coming up all right that's good there's to hear. some potential did you give him at least a magnet of the obligatory podcast he's gonna come on do the obligatory podcast what we're gonna sit down with louis anderson in here on the obligatory podcast i got no room for that guy i'll tell louis that you said he can't come to your <laughs> we'll house. figure it out though <laughs> we'll figure nah, it maybe out we'll, maybe we'll do a live from the improv or he's gonna be doing some shows he's he said he's got some shows in florida coming up and i'll probably be back on those with him and we'll just do it on location bring you out and uh, maybe we'll even get you hosting it. Hey, and I got to work on clean material. Yeah, you can do that 30-second clean joke. <sighs> That's about it. <laughs> How about you, man? So that that was it. My life was perfect this week. And dude, <laughs> dude, do you know, like, you know I'm good with merch. Like, yes. I sell some merch. But do you know the confidence you have going into a room you've never played? They've never seen your merch. There's 1,800 people, and you only need, like, half a percent of them to buy your merch and you'll sell more merch. Than you sold you. out. I sold. I, I told you I was having problems getting my watches in because the typhoons over in China. <laughs> they, yes, they came. We did the gig in Jacksonville. We drove through the night over to Clearwater. As soon as I get to Clearwater, the next morning a message comes in: your package has been delivered oh, to Orlando. Oh man! So then our next gig is down in Fort Lauderdale, which is right down seventy five and across Alligator Alley. And I sold out of what I had left at the show in Clearwater. 
And I told Louie after the show, I'm like, hey, I'm going to drop you off at the hotel, then I got to drive back to Orlando. And he's like, that's like two hours. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, I got two hours that way, two hours back. I'm like, I can't do the next three shows without merch. It'd be ridiculous. He's like, well, why don't we just go tomorrow? And I'm like, well, it adds an hour on to the trip because if we leave Clearwater to Fort Lauderdale, it's only like four hours. If we go through Orlando, uh, it's going to add like another hour. He's like, Mike, you're worth a friggin' hour. We can go pick. So uh, Kevin White did me a favor, went to my house, picked up my merch, uh, had it waiting for me in Davenport. We swung through Davenport real quick and uh, picked up my merch and head down to Fort Lauderdale. And I'm glad I did because I, dude, Fort Lauderdale people, ridiculous amount of merch. Did you, uh, wait, so you got the watches and the wallets? I had the watches and the wallets and, uh, they were able to ship your stuff from the typhoon from like the whole nightmare to, from China. Yeah. Dude, what? dude, China isn't one of the most business minded industrial people. Cause they live a little something like, like, you know how it is. We get hit with a hurricane, dude. And subway is closed for a month and a half. You I'm know? just shocked you're able to get that fast, dude. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm a good customer. <laughs> <laughs> China knows I'm not with Trump. Oh, Mr. Hurley, I hope you have your merchandise for me and my family haven't eaten in 10 days. Everything was swept away from Typhoon. <laughs> ching chong, ching chong, chong, ching chong. This is the most racist. <laughs> What is wrong with you? I'm so hungry, but we are we are very honored that you have your fire wallets and your fire watches to sell. Ching chong, ching chong. You know how I know you're racist? You're using a song from the Kung Fu Panda <laughs> soundtrack. <laughs> you can't even get off that. You're holding your iPad up and it's the Kung Fu Panda cover art. <laughs> What is wrong with you, man? <laughs> you know, yourself, you come from a line of people who has been ridiculed and made fun of. And for you to just, entire culture of people, dude. And if this affects my watch purchases. <laughs> They're going to see that, that one China man's going to actually watch our podcast. And... All I'm saying is they had a typhoon. It affected a lot of China. And, and you wrote them a hate email or I, voice I, message. I asked them where my merchandise was. <laughs> Where's my merchandise, and China they man? Said, sorry, we've been dealing with a typhoon. <laughs> so, so sorry. So, so sorry, Mike. <laughs> typhoon wiped my family away. No, 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 no help to make your watches. My son's itty bitty hands to make your it's watches. It's not like the watches weren't made. They were just sitting in a warehouse. <laughs> of course, because the kids got swept away and they can't make the watches. If for anything, you. I would think they would want to get them sent to me before the typhoon <laughs> damaged them. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that rush, Mr. Hurley needs watches. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying other people's suffering so much. <laughs> did, dude, you did. I did not. Hey, <laughs> if the typhoon affected their family, it was affecting mine too. Because <laughs> how do you think my kids get fed, man? It ain't the it ain't the thousands of dollars I make for my stand up, it's merch sales, brother. <laughs> Mm. <sighs> so you happy with yourself i'm very like uh speaking of which uh where are you gonna meet for my birthday when's your birthday uh thursday when this posts really october 4th oh guess how old i'm gonna be old enough to eat at denny's under senior citizen uh deal you think so i think so that'd be great <laughs> yeah. well i think you got free i think you got free breakfast you know who's good at that who? Ken Miller. Ken Miller knows everywhere to eat for free on your birthday. Because he's like 60. I think he just goes around <laughs> and he gets it all to go. And he just stockpiles <laughs> food for like a week. Freezes it. He's like, man, you don't even have to heat that steak up. You just leave it frozen, throw it in a Ziploc baggie for me. I'm going to eat that Tuesday. <laughs> oh, wow, that was loud. Um. Yeah, yeah. We were talking before the show. We were doing the pre-show Facebook Live thing. And, uh, yeah, Ken asked me to do something, and uh, I believe in, like, two weeks they're having a panel at Full Sail. They just bring in different people from different entertainment industries and, you know, do a panel. And he asked me if I wanted to go do it, and I'm like, yeah. Uh, and he's like, cool, what size shirt do you take? Wait, Ken's in school? No, no, this is someone from Full Sail. Oh, 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 okay. Because I guess they want to have people from the comedy industry and... You know, I, I was like, is this like a scared straight thing where we go tell them, like, stay in school, kids, because there's me. no future in comedy. <laughs> like, you think you're fine, and then all of a sudden a typhoon takes out your merch dealer and <laughs> nothing. Then you're starving. 
Uh, but he uh, he's like, yeah, you want to come do this panel? It'd be me, you, James, John. And I'm like, yeah, let's go do that. That sounds fun. And he's like, cool. What size shirt do you wear? And I'm like, I guess like a maternity. And he's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, because I'm like small up top, but I got that big belly. So if they made like maternity shirts for men, that would be a perfect fit for me right now. Because <laughs> if I just get a large, it fits my belly, but then it's baggy around my boobs. And if I get a small one, the fact that I just said I have boobs, that's horrible. Yeah. And if I, get a, if I get one that fits up top, it just get, makes like a real beer belly. And then uh, Patrick Fryman uh, out of Los Angeles, old friend of mine from high school, actually just said, he's like, they should be called maternity shirts. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I think we got a clothing line. Can I get this in a muumuu? <laughs> you guys just yeah. make a tent. I can just throw yeah. a tent over myself. Nah, I think yeah. <laughs> it's so hard with dress shirts, dude. Because I get something that fits me in the neck, and it doesn't fit me on the chest. You know, the stomach area. And then I get something that fits me on the stomach area, and it's like even when you put a tie on, it's like you still got like that big. It looks like a ventriloquist. <laughs> you just see the fucking little neck popping out of the hole. It's like a sock puppet coming up out of a freaking. It's like that worm in Star Wars just coming out of that big hole. <laughs> yeah, so. so you got to make changes, I'm assuming? Yeah. Don't get off subject. What's <laughs> What you get me for my birthday? The answer is nothing. No. I'm going to get you. No. I'm going to be on the road. It's not going to matter. I'm going to get you an exercise ball <laughs> that you're never going to use. Something exercise-y. How about, how about a nice pair of shoes? My nice pair of shoes, I don't running want shoes. I was just, you I was just humble bragging that it was my birthday. I'll give you something. I'll get you a fire wallet. Anything. I don't want anything. Hey, that's <laughs> probably the greatest gift you could give anybody. <laughs> you, you go to MikeHurleyHe.com, Mike with a Y, HurleyHe.com. Uh, go into the merch page. Pick yourself up a fire wallet. Get a fire watch. You know, whatever you want to do. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Yeah. For my birthday, I want you guys to go and purchase yourself a fire wallet or there fire watch on my website and give it to someone you love. So you're out of town Thursday anyways. Yeah, I'm out of town Thursday. I'm going to be at uh, Moonshiners in Lexington, South Carolina. I'm taking Kevin White with me for the Comedy Zone. And then the next night, we'll be in Jacksonville, North Carolina at Ducks. 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 Is it a comedy club or is it just a bar that uh, put comedy in it? It's Comedy Zone. So it's kind of oh. like what Bonkers does. You know, they go into venues. Uh, okay. But this specific place in Jacksonville, North Carolina, Ducks, the guy who owns Ducks, owns like half the town. It's one of those type of setups. Like he owns the hotel you stay at, He, which is nice. It's like one of those, uh, I want to say like a Candlewood Suites. It's not like the guy just built his own hotel. It's like he bought into a chain or something like that, but he owns like three restaurants and some sporting goods shop or something like, so yeah, the guy owns the town basically. He's like, a, um, he's like those people that have been around for a long time. Mm. It's all used to be orange groves. Yep. Stick with me, Hurley. You can get somewhere in this town. Yep. That kind of guy. Yep. He's that guy who families, families, families. Yeah. Stole from the, Indians. you know, we used to own those people. Like, all right, calm down. What is with the racism <laughs> for just... you tonight? <laughs> Dude, can we go? It, every show, it's either we got to talk about shit, piss, or racist remarks. I remember from you. the good old days where everything was separate. <laughs> this is because one person put on a Facebook post that they like your voices. Now you're just all about doing voices. I'm all about doing voices now. You're fucking, you're the Puerto Rican Michael Winslow <laughs> sitting across from me. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. I did that with my mouth. Stretch those dimples out. Stretch those dimples so. out. Yeah, but big deal coming up at the Hurley House, too, because right now the boys are up in arms trying to figure out what we're doing for Halloween costumes because this is what they like to do. They like to stick with one thing all year, and then when it comes time, they like to fucking change their mind. Do you let your kids day. go to school dressed in costume? Uh, the school usually has one day. Oh, they have it. Let you I didn't know if they're like, I want to wear this every day. And you're like, ah, whatever. Uh, they've had days like, you know... Almost like what they do at Disney. Like, you know, as an adult, you're not allowed to wear Disney. You're not allowed to wear costumes at Disney. So what they do is, what's that called? It's kind of like big with the cosplayers where they'll they'll wear regular clothes that kind of matches. What's that called? Disney. Uh, I don't know. Google it. It's when you... Uh, Wait, what? I'm confused Basically, what you're it's all these adults and... Uh, oh, like you can't go stuff. to the park wearing a costume. Like, no, you can't that's... go to the park wearing a costume. Like, you can't go dressed up like you're Snow White. So you can't be cosplay. Right, but what you can do is wear an outfit that kind of uh, alludes to like Snow White. So you won't wear like a traditional Snow White costume, but you might go with a skirt that's like, you know, blue and then wear the red bow in your hair. It's like low-key Disney cosplaying. So that's what my kids kind of do. 
when they go to school. They don't wear full-on costumes, but like they might wear their Spider-Man pajama top one day that happens to look just like a Spider-Man costume. Did you find it? Yeah, so the it kids, they, well, they don't have, I mean, they say that the kids can wear it as long as they're under 14, but once you're over 14, you're not allowed to wear any kind of costume. Yeah, but what I'm looking for is what it's specifically called. Yeah, I'm looking you, for it. I figured you being the cosplay type of. Yeah, but I never like in my head go, huh, you know what I want to do? I'm going to dress like Aladdin and go to Disney and see if I can fool somebody to take a photo with me. I didn't do that kind of weird shit. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I'll look it up and you talk. Well, I just find it funny. Like all I'm finding is people complaining that they cannot dress like their favorite Disney character. Like, dude, you're 40. Stop. Just go to Disney and relax and, and enjoy the enjoy the park. Why do you have to dress up like your favorite character, you asshat? Disney bounding is the dress up trend creative fans are obsessed with. It's called Disney bounding. It's called di- being a Disney asshole. Cosplaying, and this is from the Huffington Post. Uh, the Style and Beauty section by Kelsey Borison. Uh, cosplaying has made its way into the mainstream, but unless you're a diehard Disney fan, chances are you haven't heard of Disney bounding. For the uninitiated, that's us, Disney bounding is a subtler, more fashion-forward way for fans to show their love for Disney. Instead of wearing full-on costumes as cosplayers do, Disney bounders dress up in stylish, everyday outfits known as Disney bounds, that are simply inspired by a particular character. Uh, Disney bounding is a way to express your love for Disney through fashion. Uh, it uses clothes to recreate the outfits of your favorite Disney character without being costumey. You could go to school or in the mall in a Disney bound and not get paid for being a costume. What about Disney bonding? So, like this. Like this costume right here. Look, she's kind of dressed like something that Alice from Alice in Wonderland would wear. And yeah, then she's it. got like the little plastic flamingo because they got the flamingo croquet scene in there. And then if you wanted to be one of the dwarfs, you would wear something like that, maybe a blue beanie. And then, uh, you know, like you you get it. If you guys want to check you. this it's out. It's like, it's like a hipster do, way to dress like in cosplay. Yeah, it's almost like uh, breaking the rules, but not breaking the rules. Gotcha. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, check out <laughs> Disney. So is that what you and your bounding. kids are doing? You guys are trying to like no, figure you, out? No, you asked me if my kids get dressed up and wear just like costumes to school. Right, 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 right. And they don't. But what they do is uh, they they wear like a lot of their pajama outfits are look made up to look costumes you know, like Iron Man and Thor and everything. So they might wear that shirt one day with blue pants and then you get to be Spider-Man, kind of, you know. Man, I think I'm going to be a horrible father if I ever have a kid. Because hmm. you're like all about it. And I'm just like, man, this sounds annoying. <laughs> now, dude, when you have the kid, it changes. And, That's what I'm saying. Like for me right now, I'm just like, your biggest, I think your biggest problem with having kids is explaining to them why your toys can't be played of, with when they look just like <laughs> you damn toys. right. Because that's a collectible. <laughs> Don't you dare touch daddy's yeah. figurines. <laughs> but they're action figures. They're figurines. <laughs> you opened it. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No. 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, something changes, man. Something snaps. All right. Just, man, Don't just... touch my comic books, dad. Those, I'm a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, so, speaking of kids, because oh, you want to keep talking about the. No, go ahead. You, re- you rarely like, have I think, I think, contribute. So I think there's something ahead, that you might have to face, too, because, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I run the karate school. Are you? And <laughs> nice. And this oh, that, <laughs> that makes your Asian accent even worse. Like you so you got to do it more. <laughs> you got to add it. But. Son of a bitch. All right. But um, what's going on? This Friday, uh, mm-hmm. past Friday. So uh, the kids are like all huddled around all the boys mm-hmm. around the phone. Mm-hmm. And I kind of walk by. Around the phone? Around their iPhone. Oh, okay. And I kind of walk by and I do like a round. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, Yo, what are you guys looking at? And like the whole fumbling thing, you know, when you get caught, like, nothing, nothing. Mm-hmm. And they're like watching a twerking video. <laughs> like, uh, I guess like a Nicki Minaj, mm. like twerk, twerk video. And it's just mm. ass and titties all on the screen. Which is weird because they have access to like everything else. But yeah, that's what they're all watching. Yeah. And like, I didn't like, I didn't get mad. I was just like, all right, well. You guys like, can't send me that link. Send me that link. <laughs> like I copied it and sent it to myself. But I was just like, oh yeah, you guys shouldn't be watching this. But like a part of me is like, don't want to freak them out. Yeah. Cause like, no, that's not that's bad to watch. And then like I heard the parents kind of like yelling at them. I had to tell the parents. Yeah. Because I mean, like, yeah, like, hey. if you don't, then and it like comes one back of them I was like, 
are you serious? I was like, yeah, it's not a big you deal. Threw you know, all those kids under the bus. Yeah. I got kids <laughs> just trying to be kids, explore their sexuality. Because the last thing I needed kids, like I was watching porno. I was like, not porno. It's a twerking video. It's a difference. It, it's funny. Cause I used to have some friends in high school. They're like, dude, what are you doing this weekend? I'm like, I don't know. I might go out with the girl, catch a movie. Oh, you're so gay. What do you mean? Well, we're all going over to Kevin's. His dad's got like this awesome porn. We're going to watch that. I'm like, so wait a minute. I'm gay. Cause I'm going to go out on a date with a girl to the movies. And not blow that off to go sit over another Did you dude's ever do house that shit? with a group of dudes watching porn. No, dude. I no, never. I don't like that. Never has happened to me. But I, I always when, hear stories. I hate people. when guys even try to show me like pictures. Of, dude, check out this chick on their phone. I'm like, that, I don't need. I, no. <laughs> no. Booty. Like mm. I, I can't believe there's some people that will recommend porn to other people. I'm like, I don't want to know what you watch. <laughs> That's half the comedy scene. Yeah, I don't want to know it. I don't need to know it. I'm into stepmom porn. You into it? Yeah, uh, no kidding. No. It's got the most views, dude. It's like, I'm into I'm into quicksand porn. You heard about that mm-hmm. one? It's quicksand porn. No, what's that? <laughs> it's literally where they have it like a girl, like naked. Sanchez introduced this to me. <laughs> under the bus, <laughs> under Sanchez. The bus. So it's a girl. Kermit under the bus guns. She's Alice. in like bra and panties or half mm-hmm. naked, right. and literally she just sits in quicksand and just sinks down, and people get off on this. And then they pull her out, and it's the weirdest fetish. And I was like, "What is this?" And I'm, I am like, and it's one hundred percent not into this, and one hundred percent gonna look it up later. It's on YouTube. That's the funny part because it's not really. It's just a girl. Yeah, because it's not full she naked. In a bikini? She's like in a bikini, but like, I mean, mm. it's I really get off on watching a girl almost die. Yeah, and that's what it is. Oh. And like, I wonder if anyone died in it, and then, like, did they even say anything? Like, there's like a pit of dead chicks. Well, it's not real quicksand. I don't know. It like had to be studio made quicksand because quicksand is just a mixture of what sand and water, where the earth isn't stable underneath. Yeah, sexy girl sinking saturated. in quicksand and mud, and there's like a, there's like a, a full. Oh, I need to. I need to. I need to confirm my age. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Before you watch a girl nearly drowned in sand, we gotta make sure you're at least eighteen. I don't. I'm not gonna do this right now. Anyways, here I'll show you the screenshot. Look, see, right there. <laughs> What the hell is wrong with people, man? <laughs> you know why I feel like this is the scene in Naked and Afraid that we're waiting for every episode. <laughs> like this is what it's about. Get out of here with that's crazy, dude. That's crazy. And then you Let got a link, the link right here. Twenty three <laughs> weird new sexual fetishes. Like we needed anything new. Could we, we have just drawn like didn't R. Kelly take us to the limit? The no, the peen thing, that's like baby shit. <laughs> is that like your first base? <laughs> that's like first base nowadays, man. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. I, I'm worried about my kids, dude. Your kids gonna mean some weird shit. Ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Minecraft porn. Like what? <laughs> yeah. So now we don't know. Uh, not to get away from quicksand sexual design. I don't even know how we went down this road. But uh, yeah, it can't. Dis- I think right now. Uh, and that's the other thing. Like Aiden. Uh, so far this year, he went from he wanted to be. <laughs> We want to be. <laughs> Wait, we're going back to your kids about Halloween costumes from yeah, quicksand porn. It's we? hilarious. All right, keep going. <laughs> yeah, because you want. I just realized the transition. Yeah, no. <laughs> Remember when I said, "Yeah, okay," I was talking about that, but then you were like, "Oh, I want to." I'm like, "No, you go ahead. We can come back." To it. <laughs> so uh, he wanted to be uh, my oldest, my eight year old, wanted to be Legolas, Legolas from uh, what's it called, the Hobbit movies. Oh my ring. gosh! Well, he wanted to be the Archer dude. Little Archer, out there. so old and, movie. And then he wanted to be uh, uh, Nightcrawler from X Men, which I thought was awesome because that's a costume you actually got cosplay. You can't just go out and find like it's not the most popular character, you know. But it should be. But it looked like it was gonna be a bitch to make that costume. So I'm glad he got off that. Then uh, Infinity War came out, and he wanted to be Iron Spider. And I'm like, all right, cool, because you know we've done Spider Man for a couple of years. So okay, we definitely upgrade. Has a PVC costume. pipe in the back. Yeah, we can make that Spray work. It. And uh, now I think he's actually he's back on a Pokemon kick. And I'm like, all right, cool. So you'll be Ash or something. He wants to be this Ash Greninja. Do you follow Pokemon at nah, all? Nah, I mean, so back I, in the day, I thought it was gonna be Ash <laughs> as like a ninja. It's this whole different mutant looking thing. And I'm like, dude, that's like a thousand times harder to build than Nightcrawler. <laughs> well, so it's not even Plus, a person. Plus, nobody would ever recognize. It's not like he's just walking down the street and people are like, oh, that's Ash. It's such one of those, you know, if you're a true geek, you would love it. Because you know how when you're walking through Megacon and you see a costume that none of the 
regular. It's not a mainstream character. It's a custom character. Yeah, <laughs> like, and you see people geek out because they're like, "Oh, he was only in one panel of one issue of oh. Superman." Blah blah or like blah. Star Wars characters yeah. in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, yeah. who gives a shit? I'm like, I'm like, dude, I don't know, man. And then the other one just changes every day now. It, right now, he actually wants to be. Uh, he wanted to be Thanos for a little bit, which was fitting because he's trying to destroy half of everything I own. <laughs> but then uh, now he wants to be Peter Rabbit because he saw Peter Rabbit the other day. Peter, oh okay, the Just movie. a little uh, rabbit with a little no, blue jacket and with like, no pants. Yeah, well, who wouldn't want to be? You can't do that, dude. Why not? That's that's jail time. Dude, can't let your kid walk around no gonna, pants. It's gonna be a bunny costume with like a blue jacket. It's gonna be adorable. All right. Keep what are you gonna be on. for Halloween, an adult? <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, I see right. what you did there. You know what you should do? You should get the girl to get one of those baby carriers. Oh, I heard this front. joke before. And she could be the, not uh, original. She could <laughs> no. She, yeah, it'd be great. She could be the guy from the Hangover, and you yeah, could be yeah, like the I little got baby. it, and I could be the baby from Hangover. Didn't dick. <laughs> That was from all the uh, Asian people you've insulted this podcast. <laughs> they text me, can you please take them down a notch? <laughs> I'm like, if I take them down another notch, that's another three feet. Oh, keep on going with the short jokes. All right, cool. Just stockpiling <laughs> Just them. stockpiling them. Dick. Yeah. So uh, anything uh, anything come out in the theaters that you're excited about? Uh, I'm glad you say because I'm wearing my Venom shirt. <laughs> you weren't before that? the show. You weren't wearing the Venom shirt before the show. You were wearing your uh, Larry the Cable Guy starter shirt. Wearing my no sleeve shirt no showing sleeve. the guns. Yeah, your 22s. <laughs> so, pew pews. <laughs> Put them together. <laughs> Make it 24. Speaking of which, uh, before we get to Venom, uh, for your birthday, you actually you got a gun from your dad, right? Yes, yeah, I got it. What was it? What uh, did you get? 45? Taurus. What What caliber? 9 millimeter. 9 millimeter. Have you taken it out? Have you done some? I haven't even shot it yet. Really? Nah, I haven't had time. Mm. I'm supposed to go to range and all that bullshit, but whatever. Yeah. Easy. Shoot so, point. I took classes already, but I haven't taken like the actual. The actual go out. And like, I haven't shot my gun. No. That makes sense. I shot other people's guns. Mm-hmm. I haven't shot my gun. Yeah. Well, so growing up Latino, I figure you've shot your share of shit. <laughs> I shot my share of guns, yeah. but not mine. Did you already file the serial numbers off this one? No, because it's legit. Did you put duct tape around? No, the it's legit. So I have a legit the license and gun. Ah. I don't have to worry right. about that shit. So, and then you got the other gun. So, like, when you kill someone with the other gun, they come to investigate. You're like, no, here's my legit gun. Here's my legit gun. Exactly. That's why you haven't even taken it out to the range. Uh, like, uh, never, uh, been, never been fired. Never been fired. Leave. <laughs> it, it's just amazing that you teach karate and, like, you're going to be like, okay, kids, the first lesson in karate is be sure you own a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, that karate shit don't work, man. <laughs> yeah. Karate stuff's great for tournaments and when you forgot your gun at home and they don't have a gun. It's good for fitness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Basically, you just equivalent. You better learn how to run, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Karate is now the new pole dancing for housewives. It's it's <laughs> look, it's aerobics. It's not stripping. <laughs> um, since we're uh, what'd you call it? Uh, jumping back off, going back to the Venom. Um, mm-hmm. so I'm also scared about Venom because I'm a huge Venom fan. Yeah. And it was rated R, but now it's PG-13. Ooh, they took it down. Yeah. Mm. But then, um, so it comes out. Friday, so officially Thursday. Mm-hmm. But um, I guess there's another movie out that Lady Gaga did. It's called A Star Is Born. That one looks scary too. <laughs> well, so I guess people are tripping out because uh, people on Twitter are already like saying that they saw Venom, and they're writing reviews. And it goes, "I am the biggest Marvel fan, but I just watched Venom, and I don't know what to say. Easily the worst movie of the year. I expect so much better, wow. and now I'm just disappointed." Wow. And I'm like, "Oh snap! It's already bad." But then this has been re- retweeted like a thousand times. Yeah. And now these are saying that they're bots. And it, because after it's, so you guys you should go see Lady Gaga's new movie, A Star is Born with Bradley Cooper on this Friday instead of Venom. So now. So it's like a guerrilla marketing campaign. Right. You think? Right. And, and because they think the same guys who want to watch Venom want to go watch Bradley Cooper. That's and Lady what I Gaga said. I was like, what the hell are they talking about? I so think they, it's two different demographics there. And I guess Lady Gaga went on and she's like, uh, can you guys stop? <laughs> this yeah. bullshit like this. I, I can't wait to go to MegaCon this year where there's everybody cosplaying as Lady Gaga and Bradley <laughs> Cooper and nobody's doing Venom yeah so I don't know I, don't, I mean I'm still that's still not gonna stop me from watching the movie as PG-13 but yeah I'm yeah. worried I think we're gonna get Ghost Rider you know Ghost Rider 
Ghost, yeah, Nicolas Cage. Right, remember when that movie came out? Yep. And the trailer looked amazing? Mm, I don't remember the trailer. I remember the trailer being, looks amazing. If you watch the trailer... I being disappointed with the movie. Right. Yeah. You watch the trailer, it looks great. Then you watch the movie, you're like, oh no, what yeah. happened? That's what's going to be Venom. Ni- I'm sorry, Nicolas Cage just... I know he, he was up for... They were filming the Superman, or he was... He would have been a horrible Superman. He was going to do Kevin uh, Smith's version of Superman or whatever else. He... I think when it comes down to it, I hate to say it, Nicolas Cage just, I, I like him. I like him. He did a he was movie, great Face Off. He Face Off was amazing. He, Gone did, 60. He, did, he did a movie called Leaving Las Vegas. I the think. Rock. Yeah, The Rock. He's great when he's playing that type of character. But when when he's playing something that's already existed in canon, you know, like, like Superman or he just doesn't have, I'm sorry, he just doesn't have the look. He doesn't have the look. You know. Or the acting a little bit on that. Yeah, it's just kind of hard. I never watched National Treasure. Is it National Treasure? He's National even Treasure? he's even good in those because I never seen him. He's a character him. that you know he created that character around him, his persona. Ah, uh, okay. You know, but I mean, when you look at it, like Superman, Henry Cavill playing Superman, he's got the Superman look and everything, like what we've come to expect. You know, even uh, what's her name, Wonder Woman, uh, Gal, <gasps> Wonder Woman, Godot, right? Hmm. Val Godot is it Val Godot? I don't know. Sit on my face. What? What is wrong Wait, with you? What, what just happened? <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking of Wonder Woman and then... She was actually in the military, too. Uh, what's her name? Godot. I she keep got my full attention. No wonder you have to wash the dishes every night. Wait, what? Do you like that? <laughs> Does that make you feel relaxed? <laughs> oh, Wonder Woman. Oh. Oh, Wonder Woman. <laughs> He's so disappointed. So, so, I was just going to say, sometimes you, I just i am so disappointed in you. I don't know what it is. I expect should get more. that poster in my room. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like your father must feel every day of his life just staring at you going. No, my father's a disgusting man. You know I hope for so much more. Yeah, but you always want your son to be a step better than you. <laughs> Not go backwards into the abyss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eh, it's overrated. Oh, well, man. So, yeah, that's it. So, movies-wise, you're going to go check out Venom this week? I'm going to try. Nice. And yeah. uh, Maybe we will, too. We'll be on the road. Thursday. Might as well. You don't do anything during the day. You're going to yeah. be out of town. Maybe you got to burn minutes or time. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Got some projects I'm working on, though. So, I, that's, that's the problem. I need to... And I figured this out with me. I need to move past the, hey, this is a great idea and a good concept. And then I always need, I'm horrible at executing things. Okay. Like, you know, hey, this is fun. I get it all excited with the original idea and the concept. But like this podcast. Like, <laughs> okay, keep going. I, I, I mentioned that, you know, hey, I kind of want to do a podcast. And then you, every week, we'd bump into each other at open mic. And you're like, dude, I got this. I got this. I figured out this. I figured out this. Until you had everything. And you're like, so we're going to do this? I'm like... Yeah, I guess so. Well, it's funny because like I was doing the podcast on the like we're me me and Sanchez were gonna do drawing laughs. Yeah, and that was a game plan. Mm -hmm. But then like with Sanchez's schedule, my schedule. But Sanchez was telling me to buy all the stuff and buy Mm -hmm. this, buy that, and tell me what to buy. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, "Yeah, I want to do a podcast," and I was like, "Do I really want to do a podcast? Do I really (laughs) want him in my house?" And then, well, we didn't know it was gonna be at your house at the time. Well, we had an idea we're gonna do at the improv, but that's not realistic. Yeah. Packing the crap every single day, and I was just gonna say, well, we've talked about that. We won't do that. On the, uh, yeah, anyway. but um, that's kind of how it feels now. It's like I can. It, it's not that I won't do the work. It's just that I kind of I like working better in like a group. I like working with someone else who's there to kind of nudge you, you know. Because sometimes, man, you're just so exhausted. You get into it, dude. Especially during summer when you run the camp and cry and everything, and you got all those other projects you do, video editing for people. That when it finally comes time to do that one thing that isn't absolutely necessary to get done. The one thing that you can push off a little bit more because your finances for the week, like that's what takes priority in my life every day. What's paying me immediately. And sometimes that takes away from me doing the stuff that would probably be a better payoff in the long term, like projects people have asked me to work on, on spec or towards build something that's going to pay off in the future. And instead, I just kind of go, mm, I need that now pay. So I got to take care of, 
you know, this work and this work and this. And yeah. By the time you get like 10 minutes or an hour to work on something, all you want to do is sit down and watch Netflix and let your mind just rot, you know? Yeah. Or I just like staring at the wall. Yeah. Or even <laughs> you were telling me you got that new spider. You bought a whole game system just so you can pay that, play that Spider-Man game. <laughs> yeah, I and did. And you can't even let yourself play it during the week because otherwise. No. Saturday life, only. Life disappears. Saturday, Sunday only. Yeah. It's good that you have that kind of self-control. Though. Yeah. No. Shit. Nothing would get Nothing done. would get done. You'd be calling out of classes. And... Uh, well, I just, I will, I'll be Mike, we're going to do the podcast next month. Yeah. yeah. And then I wake up early on top of that. Yeah. So I wake up early to train people. So I'm just like, eh, I can't be that shitty. Yeah. But, so. but I mean, at the same time, if you don't go out there and take those risks to work on those projects that can lead off to a better future, then you're just in this rut of next year, you're doing the same thing. You're just taking care of the short money. I feel like we're doing therapy right now. Rather than working on your long money. Well, I, I had a bunch of therapy over the weekend for myself. Is that like, what's going on right now? Yeah, a little bit. Like, okay. you know, in, you know, every year in that 42 in that new age, a little introspective. I spend a lot of time, waste a lot of time being angry at things that I have no control over. Right. I spend a lot of time making... Um, like handsome people that are successful and have talent. I hate that. Where are they? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like the Chinese. Like what? The, <laughs> like the Asians. <laughs> wow. Bring it down a notch, man. But uh, no, it, it's it's something that I really got to work on. That whole uh, just not letting... Like if one person cuts me off in traffic, I've spent days of my life writing down license plate numbers dreaming of what i'm gonna do to people wait yeah it's what? horrible it's horrible you're it's, a psycho a little bit you write people that cut you off license plate down who doesn't you me oh, and you, half the world you just take a picture what do you do no no we don't do anything you so you let off. them go <laughs> oh my god you're a psycho dude you just let them live their lives like they have it wrong is that you. what you do they have it wrong <laughs> you and your family you take you take people's license plate down and yell at the guy that that's their dog shit in the yard <laughs> across the street. See, I got I got to make amends with that guy somehow. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much carrying all this animosity and hate around all the time. See, I thought I was hateful. I have a yeah. list, but damn. Yeah, I got to let some of this stuff go, man. I don't hate people. I just hate things. Yeah. And the other thing is we've talked about this a lot. The fact that uh, I grew up in a house where it's just like when good things happen. You like, start getting worried. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like we just, uh, I got five dollars somehow in my pocket. Yeah, as a buddy told me the other day, he's like, "Dude, he's like, you spend your whole life just waiting for that other sh- boot to drop." He's like, "And you can't live like that. You got, you got to actually be excited, waiting for the next good thing to happen." I'm like, "Yeah, I just didn't grow up like that, you know." <laughs> like when I'll be talking to my mom, talking about a couple of things going well, and she's like, "Oh, so what do you think's gonna happen?" I'm like, "I know, right?" Because <laughs> gonna happen. because. Because good things don't stay good. Good things are what happens in between all the bad, you know? And other people live the other way around. They go, oh, every now and then something bad happens. I'm like, every now and then? (laughs) It's like, that's life. And then every now and then something good gets thrown in just for shits and giggles. Just to make you go, oh, this is how the rest of the world lives. And then you're right back to... Like, the only reason I ever felt like good was thrown into my life was to give me a taste of it so I would miss it. Because remember how, like, before you fell in love the first time, you're like, yeah, I don't get what this whole love thing is. Everybody's always bitching that I can't find love. And then you fall in love and get your heart broken, and you're never the same again because now you know it's out there. But you were so much better before you experienced it, you know? I guess. I mean, you were just fucking numb. I'm to- a sucker. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, you're, you're a romantic. Yeah, if you call that. A romantic, Asian-hating son of a bitch. I was free once. I was free a lot. You were free. And I fucked it all up in that relationship. <laughs> what did, uh, oh, was it Bill Burr who did the great, uh, no, it was Dane, Dane Cook, uh, who did the, uh, the bit about, he's like, yeah, he's like, you ever get out of a relationship and then immediately get right back into one? Yeah, that was you me. Know? I was an idiot. Yeah. And it's like, that's horrible. That's like getting out of prison. And then like a week later, I go, just kind of want to go back and visit, see how the guys are doing. <laughs> you know? No. Walk away. Enjoy oh, your freedom. Oh, God, that's me. <laughs> Is it? Yes. How? You were married? Yeah. We don't talk about this a lot, but you were married. I was right? married, bro. How long? Uh, it lasted like two years and a half, but we were together for like 10. Holy shit, dude. Uh-huh. So you were doing fine until you got married. Yeah. And then it just went <laughs> shit. Yeah. Something changes, bro. And what happened? Got married, I guess. And, and then you guys just fell apart? A uh, bunch of little. I didn't see it coming. That's what sucks. <laughs> so it was weird. Yeah. Yeah. Just like she just fell up. I mean, she just 
stop being your wife. She or? just stopped loving me, <laughs> pretty much. Oh. She's like, I don't love you anymore. I'm like, oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, straight up. Straight, now I've been like, I love you, just not like that anymore. No, she you? just despised me. Oh, what were you doing wrong? I was a shitty husband. Were you? <laughs> I think so. Were you? I yeah. Uh, Would it be look fair at to say hindsight, there was probably fault on both sides? It's 50 50, but I think probably it was a not. Shitty it husband. was all you. Yeah, it was probably all me. I take nah. full blame. You were the catalyst. Sanchez then. right now is probably screaming at my at the computer. <laughs> Why was he was he a fan of the He wedding? knows everything. He yeah. knows how the, the 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 explosion. Oh, was he there during the whole thing? Did yes. he know you through the whole marriage? Yes. Was he at your wedding? Uh no. He didn't go to the wedding. What was your wedding like? We did a cruise wedding. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Big money. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. There's a lot. We could we could say this for another time. No, <laughs> it's no, a lot, man. A, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're at, we're at like well, we're there. Yeah, so, we're there. But we didn't even get to the Kavanaugh thing I want to talk about. But it's well, all right. let's let's hit that real quick. <laughs> it got all weird. Like, let's let's oh, hit that. Yeah. We'll, we'll, I'll tell you what. We'll we'll get introspective on uh, your relationship advice next week. Oh, you want my relationship advice? Well, next stay week, single. Next, as week. long as you can. Your girl's in the other room while we record. That's this. why I'm whispering. So, yeah, because who knows? The Kavanaugh thing might not be topical next week. It will be. But, uh, yeah, dude, uh, I I came over. You were watching the Saturday Night Live series. Right, I didn't see it. That had uh, uh, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Playing Kavanaugh, which I'm like, oh, yeah, I saw that. It was hysterical. But then you started playing the actual interview with Kavanaugh. Right. And that was 100 times funnier than that. Dude. I thought, how how bad is it? That you can't even parody an actual event nowadays without that actual event still being funnier. There's a couple of things that I I would never forget, uh, celebrity wise. Okay. And they're like outbursts or people just losing their shit. Mm -hmm. uh, number one's Kristen Bale mm -hmm. on the set of like I don't know. Uh, the mechanic, I think. Right, and like the guy, when the, you went the off sound the guy, lighting guy. Like, oh, look at you! Da, 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 da. I'm a no. fucking professional. No. No. Yeah. yeah, I am uh, right. You I, say you're sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's one. Yeah. Second is, um, oh man, why is this living my head? I mean, all right, whatever. So fast forward. Number one, Mel Gibson losing his shit uh, with his ex. My favorite. Was that Mel Gibson, or was it when he was pulled over and got all? No, when you know. he was on the phone with her, and she, like you could tell she's recording because she's all like, "I don't understand why you're so mad." He's like, "Bullshit! You should, you should shut up and blow me. Give me back my son." <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's, he's like, and then he's like, "I hope you get raped by a pack of n words." <laughs> you didn't hear this? No, I heard the I heard the anti-Semitic stuff he said when he got pulled over by. A no, oh, dude, we're playing that at the end. At the, after yeah. we're playing it. so good. Okay, he loses his shit and he's like, "You're a whore, mm. you whore." Best one. So now yeah. it's all about politics now because that's what the celebrities yeah. are kind of keeping it cool now, which I hate. Mm -hmm. I always like celebrities losing their shit. Well, I just find it funny, even with this Me Too movement. Like Bill Cosby just got sent up to. For life, basically, three to ten years. Oh right? boy, all the but Bill Cosby Kevin jokes. Spacey lost his career. You know, rightfully so. The boy, yeah, rightfully man. so. If he did all this, right? But I just hate the fact that Hollywood's holding actors more responsible than politicians are getting held responsible. Like, just accusations have caused Chris Hardwick to lose. He had lost his shows until right. we did a full investigation. But meanwhile, there's like diehard audio visual evidence of politicians politicians who have straight up admitted that they've done inappropriate things and these fuckers still have their jobs yeah because who comes after them there's no one to come after well, them can especially touch them. when the highest up guy also has his charges yeah, and you. that's the problem with all the senators and people in the house and everything like right now do you know that at, there's people who have lost their jobs or gone to jail like senators and everything else representatives and still got their pay for life because there was nothing once once you leave, you still get your pay. You still get your pay for life. Yep. And they actually, uh, a couple of them got together. Sanders got together and they put together a bill. They're like, hey, can we all agree if you do one of these things, we should no longer pay you? <laughs> and then they had to vote on that. So that list became like 40 things. And then that list became 12 things. But then all those Sanders were like, well, who knows? I might get tied up in this and I actually want to you know, get my pay for life. So then they just got rid of the bill. How fucking ridiculous is it that the people who vote on who should keep them in check are the people that it, ah, look at you, man. Dude, were, oh shit. I didn't it's such it. a fucking, it's at least back, you know, if you think All 10, fired up, you think like 10, 15 years cannon. ago, 
they would hide things and cover things up. Now they just come out and go, yeah, we did that. <laughs> But we're sorry, you know. I, I always, always like, like Trump is is great because like that whole the Billy Bush, Billy mm-hmm. Bush, yeah, in the in the bus, mm-hmm. and he first like, yeah, yeah, he said that, mm-hmm. and then like he, then like later he's like, uh, no, that tape doesn't sound like me at all. Like, no, it, it was you, bro. It was. <laughs> well, it was, what was the most recent thing? I, it was sure he, he was but talking it was about. Billy. It took everything for him to finally go. Okay, maybe I should put an FBI investigation on Kavanaugh just because he saw there was no turning away from this type. And then they're like, uh, well, you know, they're saying Kavanaugh was a big drinker in college. Did you oh, drink? Hey, he's hold like, up. I gotta he's, play the video. He's like, uh, I would never drink. I never drink. And there's like a thousand pictures of him with like wine and champagne and, and, and everything. And the video I'm playing is not comedy. This is him. This, this is, is Trump? Judge Bert, Brett, Brett Kavanaugh, White House staff of uh, Secretary. Hold up. Dude. That's so good you about number one the folks at vox oh, no, yeah. night before are part of what happened that's you're asking about yeah blackout i don't know have you <laughs> could you answer the question judge i just so you she asked him happened. if he blacked out no answer? did you yeah and i'm curious if you have <laughs> i have no drinking problem the sweatnik thing is a joke <laughs> dude you're on course. tv yeah you're losing your shit would you like to say more about it no did the word <laughs> you used in I already, your already, book, said, I already answered the alcohol. question. If you're, yeah, yeah, you, you relate to alcohol. I like you beer. Have that. I like beer. I don't know if you do. Okay. Do you like beer, Senator, or not? Um, what do you like to drink? Next one is. Senator, what do you like judge. to drink? I welcome whatever the committee wants to do because I'm telling the truth. I want to know what you want to do. I, I'm telling the truth. I want to know what you want to do, Judge. I'm innocent. I'm innocent of you this want the truth. You're prepared for an FBI you investigation. They don't reach conclusions. You reach the conclusion. No, Senator. but they do investigate questions. Maya, what do you think? Dude, so, like, Dude. When, there, and there's video. So that all started with, uh, they're, of course, doing this confirmation hearing. Right. And uh, because he wants to be a Supreme Court justice. Of course. And then a woman comes forward and says that he had acted inappropriately. So now they got to do this investigation. So they're doing this investigation to find out what he was like and if it was possible, was he a big drinker and everything else. And what I love the most is he's he wants to be the highest judge, sit on that bench, the highest judge in the country. Yet he's doing everything that if a person was getting questioned in his courtroom was doing, he would hold in contempt. <laughs> You know, hey, can you just answer the fucking? We're not here to talk about the prosecutor. We're asking you if you like a beer, like, What's, like, know, hey, have you ever committed murder? Have you ever committed murder? <laughs> I'm then, asking you. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. I asked you first. No, what? actually, I asked you first. Oh, now it's gonna be a thing. <laughs> I know you are, but what am I? That it's a step away from being. I know you are, but why am I? And then you know what the weirdest thing is? He had a calendar from 1982. Like, See, who keeps I, calendars? I saw that in the uh, SNL sketch. I didn't think he really. Did he, he really, really kept that? a calendar of and everything. He's like he, working out. Yeah, working out. I used to just hang out with, you know, tra- trash man Trent, trash man Trent, and, trash man Trent, and me used to bang weights, lift weights. And why? Why would you even bring that calendar up if there were things on there like Devil's Triangle? Or, yeah, dude, they got an FBI agent uh, investigating what a Devil's Triangle is. And do you know what a Devil's Triangle is? I. It's it's a it's a menage a trois, but where it's two guys and one girl. Correct. For the record, I am not FBI, but I just looked this up. And, uh, I, <laughs> I went to UrbanDictionary.com. I could have saved so much taxpayers' dollars. <laughs> Devil's Triangle: a threesome with one woman and two men. Mm-hmm. It's important to remember that a straight man do, does not make any eye contact while in the act. <laughs> okay, so it's almost like an Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Kavanaugh, yes. Do you know what a pink sock is? Yeah, yeah. It's just just me and the boys. We step in some red ink. That's all. Your socks get red. Okay. Uh, uh, do you? Oh, like there's another one. They ask him what a blumpkin is. You oh, did know? they actually interview him? Yeah. On these. Yeah, I was looking questions? for that video. I don't know where it's at. I'll have to check it out. And then they're like, you know what a blump? You know what a blumpkin is? It's. It's like when you shit in a pumpkin. It's a pumpkin. Blunk, yeah. He was like, well, that's when you fart. If you're asking me if about flatulence, flatulence, whatever, farting, and, and that's what I used to do when I was younger. I can't believe this is the conversation going on in yeah. the most hollowed of halls. For the record, a pumpkin is the process of snorting a line of cocaine off a male's erect penis while taking a shit. What? <laughs> is that what you're doing? 
And he wrote that in so, his calendar, by so the way. He he wrote that? <laughs> yes. Did How do you a, think they know about did it? Did a Blumpkin off Big Toe Tony <laughs> or something? He wrote this in the calendar. That's why they're asking him. Like, It's not like they're like, hey, let's just fuck with him. And like, hey, so, uh, what's up? Uh, okay, so <laughs> is the guy snorting taking the shit? Or is it some... Uh, Good question. I guess... I guess that wouldn't work out. No, I guess well, it has to be you taking a shit if you're snorting while there's a guy with an erect penis in front of you. So it's pretty much like if I was on the toilet taking a dump. Okay. And then I had a hard on. Uh-huh. And then you snort the cocaine. Don't put me in this And equation. then you snort the cocaine off my wang. <laughs> no, because how are you going to? Dude, that doesn't even work. Well, I kind of I kind of like no, maneuvered it, it towards that, you. Does it, does it have that diagram? What you you want to sh- you want to do this? I think it's got to be the guy standing that has the erection and the coke because the guy in the who's taking the shit sitting has to be the one snorting. Or maybe I'm standing like I'm doing like a like a like a you know, horse how dance. How come in both your fantasies <laughs> I'm the one snorting it off your? So maybe I'm horse dancing, right? Dude, if it was and you, you'd have to get on a step stool. Like my kid has, <laughs> my kid has a stool he uses to hit the toilet. If you were gonna let someone do one off your cock, you would have to get phone. No, no, no books let's keep it with you and, and me. Don't make bring other people no, in. Don't this. make it all no, weird. Don't make it all weird. Don't dude. make it all weird. Just, I look, don't want to do. It's a just a scenario, dude. It's not. A, it's not like it's happening. <laughs> I was just let me, here. <laughs> Let's just act it out. Fully clothed just to see. <laughs> just to That's see. what they should have done in the hearing. Like, they should have had like could you, reenactments. Could, could, you, could, you, <laughs> could you show for the court? Come up here and show for the court. Wouldn't that be great to see on CNN? Just <laughs> How did a court become like a jackass episode? Dude, like, it, it's like Steve-O is going to kick through the door. Yeah, I'll do it, dude. It, it really is. Who's the guy? Borat. This is like one of those. <laughs> this is like his episode. This can't be really happening. Dude. Is there any doubt other countries look at us and go, what the fuck is going on? Oh, oh man, we're, we're the greatest soap opera ever. <laughs> oh, what was it? He was at, uh, what was it, United Nations last week when he got laughed at? Oh, my God. He was like, we are the greatest. It might, I've done more in my term than the <laughs> people who couldn't even hold it in anymore. I, just, ah! he's like, I wasn't expecting I, that I reaction. Wasn't, no, then he, then he turned and he's like, I was, I was trying to do a joke. Like, you dick. Yeah. <laughs> you dick. Yeah. Oh, well. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go off this week. I'm gonna. Are we doing what's going on at the Improv Wednesday night? You heading out there? No, I, I thought it was this week. Next week, Wednesday, mm-hmm. I'm doing a charity show for Tony Black. Oh, what's going on with Tony? I don't know. <laughs> you just he invited me, oh, and okay. I, I gotta like I gotta look at. I think it's just a charity event just to raise money for another charity. I don't think anything wrong with Tony. Oh, okay. Cool. I think it's just something that he does on yeah. the side. Oh, nice. So he's doing a comedy show for a charity event. And uh, he asked me to be on it. I said, of course. Nice. And uh, that's the only really show I got coming up now until like this about 17th. Yeah. And uh, open. I hosted Other Bar last night. Yeah. So that was good. Packed for house. That was, that was awesome. Oh, yeah. I was going to try and make it out, but I did the Dude, Key West and nobody sh- And nobody came out. I had to look wow. for comedians. Wow. I was done at 1030. Wow. I did the Key West to Orlando Drive. And when I got home, I had to take care of some... Uh, you know, because I was on the road all oh, day. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're a beat. I had so much to take care of. It wasn't even beat. It was I had to take care of the radio stuff I do. And, but, um, yeah, man. So uh, if you happen to be out and about, Kevin White and I will be taking the show on the road. We'll be in Lexington, South Carolina on my birthday, October 4th at Moonshiners. That show starts at 730, but you can get there around 8. That way you miss Kevin White and you can just watch me. <laughs> and then uh, we'll be in Jacksonville, North Carolina the next day at Ducks. Uh, that's October 5th. I believe that shows eight o'clock. And I think there might be two shows that night. I'm not sure, but, uh, I'm just hoping we don't hit number one, uh, feel horrible for all the hurricane damage they had up there. Cause I'm still seeing videos of flooding in areas and stuff like that. But, uh, I'm also hoping we don't hit any of that while I'm driving through. So, yeah. But, and then, uh, yeah, that's it. My birthday's on Thursday, so... Uh, Happy you know, pre-birthday. If you get bored, if you're listening to this, it's Thursday. Uh, <clears throat> go ahead, shoot me a message on Facebook. So make me feel special, because uh, one year I had, like, 700 birthday wishes, and it's gone downhill ever since. And I, <laughs> I, I personally take that as my popularity fading, or maybe maybe friends are dying off. Maybe I'm at that age, where every year friends die off, you know? I'm you know, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> It's okay. You're on the list. You want to do a blumpkin to cheer you up? No. Oh, okay. No. You know what cheers me up? What? When I go to the DMV, 
And I pulled up all those license plate numbers of people who cut me off. <laughs> Freaking and psycho, I dude. Address. That's what I want. You're a weirdo. I'm going to date someone in the DMV just so I can have access to the computer Hopefully files. Hopefully she so has all her teeth. Do, it doesn't matter if she's got access. I'm going to... Dude, I can't wait to show up on their doorstep. And What's do what? this about? You don't remember six years ago, OBT? You ran a yellow light? Almost killed me? <laughs> no. Okay, maybe I blew this out of proportion. Yeah, you should work on uh, something else. Focus your energy elsewhere. Well, I want to be a better person, but first I have to right the wrongs that have been done to me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's my vision quest. <laughs> it's a very short vision quest. You're going to get shot. It is Florida. <laughs> but I borrowed your gun. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, great. Right. <laughs> I'm going to put it back in the box right where I find it. It's not in a box. I'll make sure I only shoot Asian people and then pin it all on you. <laughs> oh, we have all these recordings. Ching chong. God, I hate that you're racist. <laughs> if there's any Asian people that actually listen to us, I apologize. They won't anymore. <laughs> I love your food. We'll get shut down. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> no, see, there you go. <laughs> that was Kermit. <laughs> All right. Well, episode 38 Yeah, in done. the wraps. Yeah. And uh, that's it. We're at like an hour five. Sanchez, yeah. Sanchez is going to kill us. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. At least I we didn't him. stop the tape. No, we didn't stop the tape. But I think the video is about to run out, so we should end it. Yeah. When are we going to be famous? Episode 40. Perfect. 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 Episode 40. Here famous. comes the fame. Here comes the fame, baby. Fame in our grass. All right, man. All right, guys. I'll talk to you next week. Have a good week. Make me a cake. Later. <laughs>